Okay? And you know, at the beginning of this year, we started a new series in Joshua, the book of Joshua. And the title of our series has been, You Have Not Passed This Way Before. And, you know, a fitting title for where our church has been, you know, up to this point this year and even last year as we've launched a new campus in the Roaring Fork Valley, as we're praying about what that looks like going forward, you know, in uh, Eagle County and what it looks like in other places around us. Um, But I could never have guessed the truth of that statement because we have not passed this way before. What we're going through right now is new to all of us. It's totally different than anything that any of us have ever experienced. None of us have lived through a real pandemic like this. None of us have lived through um, this type of social isolation on this scale. And so we are in a new season as a church and as a world. And so um, we're going to pause in the book of Joshua. And we will get back to Joshua soon. I don't want you to worry about the fact that we're going to go back there. But, you know, for this week, I really felt the Lord leading us in a different direction. And so we're going to be in Matthew chapter 14 this week. So if you have your Bibles, open to Matthew chapter 14. If you don't have your Bible, um, there's a Bible there in the church online app. You can also, you know, find something online. But, you know, last week we talked about how we're in the midst of a storm. As a nation, as families, as individuals, as a state, we are in a storm, right? And it feels a little bit like being a ship and just being tossed around on the waves, blown about, going all different directions, just tossed about on the waves, And uh, I don't know if you've ever been on a boat in the ocean before, um, and if you've ever been on rough seas, but it's kind of crazy when you are, right? I remember this one time, um, went with some family members, we had a big extended family gathering, and we chartered a fishing boat, and we went out to go fish uh, in the ocean, and we're out there, and it was a rough water day, and so we, but it was like our, our day to go, and so we went out, and the boat was just tossing all over the place, and everybody that went got seasick. Right, And I, I was just there, and it was like, we're trying to fish. It's like, oh, it's my turn to fish. Oh, man, I don't feel very good. And then you just go lay down after you fish, right? And it's just, like, not fun. And I think that's probably how a lot of us feel right now. We are feeling seasick with the reality of getting tossed back and forth by all of the craziness that's going on in our world, with the, the, the virus and the fear of that, the economy, the fact that the government is telling us to do things. I mean, all these things, we're getting tossed back and forth feeling seasick in the midst of it. And maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe you're feeling a little bit seasick from all of this. Maybe you're wondering how you're going to pay your bills and how you're going to get by without having that regular income to, to, to pay for your food and your bills and all those things. Or maybe, you know, maybe you lost your job already as a result of this. And you're wondering what you're going to do, how you're going to get by. Maybe you're wondering if you're going to get sick or if your loved ones are going to get sick. And if that is going to happen, what are you going to do? How are you going to handle that? How are you going to survive through that? Maybe for you, you're hurting from the loss of someone in your life, whether it's from this. Maybe it's with, with Rod passing away you know, this past week, and that's deeply affecting you. Or maybe it's somebody else that you lost recently, totally unrelated to this whole COVID thing. Maybe for you... This whole situation is just exacerbating some other things that you're going through as you've been dealing with fear and anxiety and you've been dealing with being stuck at home. It's just making it worse than it was even before. I don't know where you're at, but it feels like we're all in a storm right now. It feels that way to me. And if that's you, if you feel like you're in that storm and if you're live with us right now, Um, Would you just go and and post that in the comments? Would you just say, you know what? Yeah, that's where I'm at. I feel like I'm in the storm. And I'm not saying that to say that to put you on the spot. I'm saying that to say that I think it's actually good that we all recognize that, man, this is hard. It's hard. It's okay to say, you know what? I'm I'm not okay or I'm scared or I'm having a hard time with all of this. I'm having a hard time with having lost my job. I'm having a hard time with the fact that I've been sick all week and I can't go out. I'm having a hard time with this whole situation that we're facing. And I think as we understand that we're not alone in that, it makes it a little bit easier to bear the weight of what we're going through. So would you comment that wherever, whatever platform you're watching on, comment that on there if you're watching live with us today. And you know what, I'll tell you what, to be honest, I'm a little bit scared with all of this. I'm a little bit freaked out. Not 
for my own health. I'm not worried about myself or my family, although, I mean, it totally could happen, you know, but the, the moment that I pass from this earth is the moment that I'm face to face with Jesus. And so that's going to be better for me. That's not what I'm worried about, but I am worried about my friends. I'm worried about my family members. I'm worried about the economy. I'm worried about all of those things. It causes us to feel fearful, right, and a little bit seasick in the midst of the storm. And so last week, we talked about how Jesus is our anchor to hold us in the midst of the storm, how he holds us steady, that when those waves come and try to blow us over, that he keeps us grounded. And we saw in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 19, in the first half of the verse, it says, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls, the hope that we have in Jesus. It anchors us down. See, when you're anchored in Jesus, you can filter everything that you experience through your relationship with Jesus and know that he's going to work it together for good, as we just sang earlier. Do that, right? If you remember, if you were watching last week, I took that big cup of ugly, nasty, dirty water, and I took the life straw, and I sucked it out through there, and it filtered it out, right? Process what you're going through through that filter of Jesus, and he anchors you down. See, Jesus is our life straw, right? He filters out what we're going through so that we go through it and we're better for it. See, that's a great place to start. It's a great place to start getting anchored in Jesus, filtering your experience through your relationship with Jesus so that you're not tossed about by the waves, so that you're not in that place of seasickness and being overwhelmed by the storm. Um, But here's the thing. I think that's just the beginning. Being anchored and weathering the storm is just the beginning. Because I don't believe that God just wants us to ride this storm out. I don't believe that's the purpose here. I don't think that God's purpose for you and I is just to survive this trial, but to thrive in this trial. See, God's purpose for you is not just to survive, but to thrive. He wants you to thrive under pressure. He wants you to thrive in the situation that you're going through, not just to get through it. Now, I say that knowing full well that many of you that are watching today are sick with this virus. I say that knowing that some of you are probably going to lose your job as a result of this virus. I say that knowing that some of you might get really sick. You might even pass away as a result of this virus. And so how am I talking about that? What does that mean to, to thrive in the midst of this? I'm not saying that God is going to give you health and wealth. That's not it at all. Because you can have both health and wealth and be miserable and just surviving. That's not the point. You see, there's a different sort of thriving that is way more important and way better than just being healthy or having money. Way better than that. What do you think that might be? If you're watching live with us today, you can post that in the comments. We'd love to hear your thoughts on that. But see, here's the thing. God's purpose for you is not just to survive, it is to thrive. I believe that God has so much more in store for us for his church, and for this nation. But whether we experience that thriving is up to us. God has given us the tools both to survive and to thrive. He's given us that anchor for our souls. We will, if we believe in Jesus and we belong to Jesus, we have hope. We can be anchored in Jesus, but we can also thrive in the midst of it. It's up to us and how we respond to God in the midst of the storm. And I'll show you what I mean. Look with me in Matthew Chapter 14, we're going to pick up in verse 22 today. It says, Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now, when evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. And see, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and cross over by themselves. And this was about evening time, right? And so Jesus sent them off. It was probably still light or just starting to get dark. And he walked up on the mountain to pray, and he sent them across the water. And as they're going across the water, this storm kicks up, and the wind's blowing, and the waves are coming up. And if you, you know, have ever been on a boat in a storm, or if you've ever been out on the water in a kayak, and it's getting windy on a lake or something like that, you know that this is a pretty crazy time to be in it. And so, uh, you know, this last summer, my family and I, we went camping up at Grant Lake, and we were up there, and we took our paddle boards out, and we're paddle boarding out on the water, and just had a good, nice lunch. We paddle boarded away and had lunch, and then we were kind of getting ready to come back, and this storm blew in. 
And as the storm blew in, the, the white caps are kind of kicking up and the wind's going and it's just a little bit of rain's coming in. And I'm like, oh, we better get back quick or we're going to get stuck, right? And so we get out on the water and we're just paddling and paddling and paddling, paddling and paddling and just going and going. And, you know, we're getting tipped over. So I had to get down on my knees so that I could keep paddling and keep paddling. And I look over at the shores. I'm just paddling really hard and I'm watching and like, the shore's not moving. I'm staying in the same place as I'm paddling. Like, what is going on? I'm just staying in the same place. And then I stop paddling for a second, and I'm going backwards. Like, oh, no. What's going on? The wind had been pushing the water so much that I couldn't make any progress going forward. My wife was on a separate paddleboard, and so she just decided to cut for the shore. And so she went over there, and she's climbing out on the rocks. And I'm like, okay, I'll do that with her, right? So I paddled over to the shore on the side over here, and I'm like, okay, we'll just walk back to where we're going. And as I started walking, it's all like gravelly and sharp rocks, and I didn't bring shoes. And so I'm like, oh, man, this hurts. I don't know. I'm going to go back out on the water. And so I go out there, and I'm paddling, and I'm paddling, and I'm paddling, and I'm paddling, and just like so hard to get where I was going. And see, that's what the disciples were doing. Jesus sent them out into the water alone, and they're just paddling and paddling and paddling and paddling, and they're getting tossed around by the wind and the waves. They're probably feeling a little bit tired and weary and fearful, and they're in the storm, and Jesus isn't with them. And maybe that's how you feel today. Maybe you feel like you're in the storm, and Jesus isn't with you. Where is he? Where is he in the midst of your hardship? Well, look with me in verse 25. It says, Now in the fourth watch of the night, which was between 3 a.m. and 6 a.m., in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And we'll get to that in just a second. But here's the deal. This is like 3, 4, probably 4 or 5 a.m., something like that, in the middle of the night. They had started paddling in the evening, so 7, 8 p.m., right? So this is multiple hours later they're talking like seven or eight hours later that they've been just sitting there paddling in the water and they've gone, you know, only to the middle of the lake and now it's dark and they can't see the shore. They don't know where they are and the storm's blowing and the wind's blowing and the waves are tossing them around and they're probably fearful already. And then suddenly they see somebody walking to them on the water. Look with me in verse 26 at what it says here. <clears throat> And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. It's a ghost. They see this guy walking on the water. They've been paddling all night. They're weary. They're tired. They're worn out. They don't have anything left. They've been going and going and going and going. And now they look out and they see somebody walking to them on the water. And they're thinking, Oh, man, this is a ghost. What is going on? This is crazy right now, and they're fearful, right? You can imagine them being fearful. Maybe you've had a moment like that this week. It's already been bad enough. You've already been in the storm. You've been, you know, stuck in your house, and then something crazy happened. I know for us, uh, the other night, I don't know what night it was. I can't remember, but uh, I live in Eagle, and the power went out at midnight in Eagle, and the way that I know is at midnight is at 1201, all my fire alarms started beeping, right, because they needed batteries replaced. I'm like, oh, no, right, and I'm waking up in the middle of the night. What's going on? What's going on? You know, and I'm going around, and I look out the front window, and there's no lights on in the whole neighborhood. And in that moment, I'm thinking, okay, I need to, like, I need to get, like, Mad Max prepared here now, right? This is crazy what's going on. Something is going, like, not only did they tell us we have to stay home, not only is there all this stuff going on, but now there's no power. This is not a good situation. Is it like World War III going on, or what is the deal here, right? Just kind of scared and fearful in that moment, right? Maybe you've had a moment like that this week. Maybe you've had a moment where you're like, oh, what else could possibly go wrong? Maybe you lost your job. I, I don't know what it is for you, but just that moment of, oh, man, they're like, it's a ghost. But look here in verse 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, be of good cheer. It is I. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. It's me, Jesus says. It's me. Don't be afraid. See, Jesus came to them in their struggle. He didn't leave them. You know, he left them longer than they would have liked for him to, but he didn't leave them. He met them in their hardship, and he comes to them and says, don't be afraid, I'm with you. You know, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 10 speaks to this, where it says, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. 
I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. See, Jesus is saying the same thing to you in the middle of your storm. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. Fear not. I'm with you. Fear not. I'm with you. Fear not. I am with you. I am with you. He's with us. He's with us in this hardship. He's not going to leave us. He's not going to forsake us. He's promised. See, this is our anchor in the storm, that Jesus is with us, that he meets us right in the moment of our need. Start there. That's a great place to start. That will keep you. That will hold you fast in the storm. That will keep you from the seasickness. That will keep you from getting tossed and blown around. And hopefully you're there with us. And hopefully you've already done that. You've put your trust in Jesus and you are anchored in Jesus. But if you're not, we'll talk about that a little bit later. I want to give you an opportunity to do that today. But if you're anchored in Jesus, you know, you might get the occasional rogue wave that comes in and knocks you over a little bit and throws you off course just for a minute. But then you come back, right? It's like the other day, not only, you know, did our, our, our power go out, but then the next day I was there and I was just walking into my living room, in my, into my bedroom, and I had some clothes on the floor. I think like a sweatshirt or something I had thrown down there, and I was going to pick it up and wear it. And I looked, and there was a spider on the wall right next to it. And if you know me, you know that I really don't like spiders. I, it's, it's like, it's kind of part fear and part hatred, right? It's a little bit of both. Like, I don't know why God created spiders. I really don't understand it. And so I'm looking there and I'm like, oh no, right? And I had this moment of just fear in my heart. And I'm like, oh no, not only are we facing coronavirus, but now it's spider season too, right? I haven't seen any of these devil beasts for like months and now I have to face not only a killer virus, but killer bugs in my house, right? And it was just like this moment of like, ugh. And then I grabbed a tissue and squished it. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, that was silly, right? That was unnecessary. And see, that's what it's like when you're anchored to Jesus. You have those moments that come up, the little wave that comes over and tosses you over a little bit. And it's like, oh, wait a second. I was just off course there. I know where my hope lies, I can be grounded there. That's what Jesus does, right? But see, here's the thing. That, even that, is surviving, right? When you're anchored in Jesus, you can trust that you're going to make it, that he'll be with you, that he'll support you, that he'll hold you through, that he will accomplish his purpose for you, that you will not face something that God has not first allowed to come through into your life. You can trust that when you're anchored in Jesus. But here's the thing. That's just surviving. There's another level. If you want to level up yourself, if you want to get to that next level, there's something else that you can do. And we see it in what Peter does here, right? So these disciples are, are seeing Jesus, and they're afraid because they think he's a ghost. And he says, hey, it's me. I'm with you. Don't be afraid. But then look with me here what it says in verse 28. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. Now, I want you to think about this for a second. The disciples, they're there, they're in this boat, they're scared, they've been walking, you know, all, I mean, they've been rowing all night, they've been, you know, getting tossed around by the waves, they're exhausted because they've been paddling for like eight hours, they're overwhelmed, they see what they think is a ghost, and they're fearful about that, and then they realize it's Jesus, and they're thinking, yes, thank you, ah, oh, we're safe. Our anchor is here. Our hope is here. He's going to rescue us from this. He's going to get us out of this situation. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. And that's what probably all of the disciples felt. But then Peter had something else that kind of clicked in his brain. He's like, wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. There's something bigger going on here. Peter saw that there was something much bigger going on, and that it wasn't about being delivered from the storm, that this storm wasn't something that was just happening to Peter. It's not something that he just needed to get through, but Peter realized that this storm was an opportunity for him to see God's power at work in his life, to not just survive, but actually to thrive in the midst of it. See, maybe you're, you know, there in the storm, and you're anchored in Jesus, and you're sitting there, and you're saying, thank you, Lord. I, I don't have to be afraid. I can cling to you. I can trust you. I know that you're going to get me through this, but I want to tell you, even if that's you, that's a good place to start, but that's not God's will for you. God's will for you is not for you to just survive. He wants you to thrive in the midst of the storm. He wants to see you take up wings and fly through the middle of it. Peter saw this in this moment. 
when Peter saw Jesus. See, suddenly when Peter sees Jesus, he sees beyond the storm and the fear and the worry and the stress and the tiredness and all the stuff that had just happened to him. He sees beyond it all. And when Peter sees Jesus, he sees something else. He sees the chance not to just escape the storm, not to just escape the wind and the waves, but to walk on them. Think about that. Peter sees Jesus and he says, Lord, if it's you, tell me to come out to you on the water. And what does Jesus do? Look with me in verse 29. So he said, come. And when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on water to go to Jesus. See, Jesus is there and he says, come to me. And so Peter obediently just steps out of the boat, right? Knowing full well that he could just sink into the water. But he has this faith that he puts in Jesus. And he steps out and he begins to walk on the water in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the wind, in the midst of the waves. Not only is he surviving, he's doing something that he never would have imagined possible before. And see, if you're just anchored in Jesus, yes, you'll be okay and you'll weather the storm. But what if, what if, what if there's something else going on here? What if there's something bigger in this? What if it's an opportunity that's bigger than just getting through the storm, bigger than just surviving the hardship, but actually thriving in the midst of it? Not to just be anchored so that you get through, but to actually step out and walk on water. What if there's an opportunity in the midst of what you're facing today to rise above the storm and use it as a vehicle to see the power of God at work in your life? That's what Peter saw. Peter looked over and he saw Jesus on the water and he's saying, man, this is like this stuff that's been happening to me. Like this is nothing. Jesus is there walking on water. I have the opportunity to see something miraculous happen in my life. It's kind of like when a wave comes, right? If you go to the beach, um, I love the beach. I love sitting under a palm tree, but I really don't like getting in the water. Something about like getting down and having those waves hit you and like all that stuff. I just don't like it. I don't like not knowing what's around me. Like I get, you know, maybe there's a shark over there or a stingray or something like that and you just can't see it, right? I don't like that stuff. And so when the waves come and you get hit and you get crashed, if you've ever had that happen, it's not fun, right? But see, here's the thing. If you go prepared, you take your surfboard out there, you get to ride that wave. And the bigger the wave and the more powerful the wave is, the more damage that it could cause, the better ride you get. It's the same thing with what you're going through today. See, I believe this is what God is doing in his church right now as we face this storm that our world is in. This has literally overnight changed the way that we live. It's changed the way that we work. It's changed how we do church. But see, God wasn't ignorant of this. He knew this was going to happen. He was not caught off guard by COVID-19. He's not surprised this is happening. He knew this storm was coming. And here's the thing. God has a plan and a purpose in the midst of it. Now, I'm not saying that God caused this on purpose. What I'm saying is that God is purposing this for good. As we read in, in Romans 8, 28, you know, he takes all things and makes them work together for good to those who love him, right? He is taking this horrible situation and he's working it for good in your life. And so the question really is this. Do I want to survive or do I want to thrive? Do I want to just get through the wind and the waves and just get to shore? Or do I want to walk on water? Because that's the choice that's before every one of us. Now, for the church, for our nation, for this church here in this nation, you know, for mountain life, but way bigger than that, for, for church in America, I believe that God is going to take this unique moment in history and use this to spark a revival in our country. I really truly believe that because people are looking for hope right now, right? They want it. They need it desperately. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you are a deliverer of hope, right? You're a deliverer of hope. You're better than the UPS guy dropping off Amazon when you're quarantined at home. You get to bring the real hope into somebody's life. You get to bring real life into somebody's hurt that they're experiencing, right? Because we believe and belong to Jesus. I believe God's going to spark a revival through this. I think God is doing something way better than we can even imagine through this hard situation. And the choice for each of us as individuals is whether we're just going to survive the storm or we're going to thrive in the midst of it. 
And so what does that look like for you? What would thriving look like in your life? Maybe it's growing closer in your walk with the Lord. Maybe it is serving others and stepping out to serve in a way that you haven't before, especially, you know, in this time when you have to get creative and you can't go, like, visit somebody. Maybe it's sharing your faith with somebody that's hurting and needs hope or experiencing healing in your marriage, or overcoming fear and living in confidence in God. Or maybe for you, it's leaving an addiction behind. I don't know what it is for you, but we all have an opportunity to thrive and not just survive in this situation. You know, when this first kind of hit, and we just realized that we weren't going to be able to have regular church last week, and all this stuff was coming down, and people started getting sick in the community here in Eagle County, um, my wife just had this, this thought that, that really stuck with me, and just, just such a, a, an amazing moment just to see her heart in this. She just said in that moment, she's like, you know what? I can't wait to serve my way through this. And I remember just sitting there, and in that moment, I had been thinking about, man, all this stuff is happening to me. I don't know. Like, all this craziness is happening to my life. And her heart was, this isn't about me. This isn't about me. I can't wait to see how God's going to use me in other people's lives in the midst of this. Man, what a cool place to be. I want to be there, right? I want, to, I want to see how God is going to use my life to impact others, to do something way bigger than I could even imagine or think up. I mean, maybe that's how God wants to thrive, see you thrive in your life is, is something that you can't even imagine yet, right? Peter would never have imagined he could ever walk on water if you had asked him the day before until he saw Jesus out there doing it. And then he's saying, okay, I want to do that. I want to see that happen in my life. You know, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. See, God is able to do more than you can imagine, and he does that by the power that is alive and well inside of you, by the Holy Spirit. See, he wants you to thrive in ways that you can't even imagine yet. In the midst of the storm, not to pull you out of the storm, but to walk on top of the water as Peter did. See, I believe that God wants to blow your mind through this trial. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to come out of this trial unscathed. That's not what I'm saying at all. No, I think that sometimes to see the growth that God wants to bring in our life, we have to experience a pruning, a cutting away. We have to go through hardship. Jesus said, you will have many trials and hardships in this world, but take heart, I've overcome the world, right? So it's not that we're just not going to be, you know, go through hardship, but that we actually, as we go through it, we rise above it and we walk on water. So I'm going to give you a little bit of an illustration of this, okay? So I have here a tea bag, and... Um, I'm going to make this tea bag fly. And you're thinking, well, how are you going to do that? Well, I'll show you. I'm going to just go ahead and take off the tag there. And, you know, to really see the tea bag realize its full potential, it's going to have to go through some stuff. It's going to have to go through an emptying, okay? And so I'm going to pour out all of the tea that's there. You can see. And if that's your life and you're thinking, man, I thought I was a teabag. I thought that my life was this one way and then suddenly everything's taken away. I've been emptied out. What am I going to do? How am I going to make it through this situation? And now you're feeling empty. You're feeling poured out. Sometimes you need to be emptied in order to see God's work in your life and to see the, the reality of how he wants to work in your life and to move in your life. And so just imagine that this is you, right? Okay, and now you've been emptied out. That might be right where you're at right now. It's like, okay, this has been a crazy situation I've been emptied out. And now you're thinking, what else can go wrong? What else could happen in my life? Everything's messed up. I don't understand what, what I'm going through. And then this happens. You see fire come. And your life is burning down as you know it. And you can't understand what's going on. And it's burning to the ground. And you're thinking, am I ever going to get away? But then suddenly you start to fly. God moves in your life in such a way that you lift up above the circumstance that you're going through to realize the full potential that God has in your life for you is way bigger and way different than you could have imagined. And yes, it's going to involve being emptied. And it might be involved going through the fire, right? If you're that teabag and you're seeing that flame come at you, you're like, I don't want to go through that. It was only able to fly as it went through the fire. This is why in Romans chapter 8, verse 18, it says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time 
are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. And of course, this is talking about eternity in heaven, right? When we pass from this earth, we're going to experience things that we can't even imagine. But it's not just in heaven. It's also here on earth. You know, the psalmist said, you know, I would have despaired of hope unless I believed that I would see the goodness of God in the land of the living, right? See, God wants to move in your life today, here, now, in this moment. In the trial that you're going through right now, he's giving you the opportunity not just to survive but to thrive, to step out onto the waves and to walk on water. See, Jesus called Peter to him. And as Peter stepped out, he was able to walk on water, something he would never have imagined being able to do before because of his obedience and faith in the midst of the storm. Jesus hadn't saved him from the storm yet. He stepped out further into it. He stepped out where it was even crazier than in the boat. The boat's the safe place to be in the middle of the storm. And he just chooses to step out in trust and faith onto the water. He walked by faith. See, faith unleashes the supernatural. Over and over again, when Jesus would heal someone, he would tell them, your faith has made you well. Your faith has made you well. Walking by faith, trusting Jesus by faith, stepping into the storm by faith, saying, whatever comes, Lord, I am yours. I want to fly with you. I want to walk on water. And now in the very next verse, I mean, Peter takes his eyes off of Jesus for a second, and he starts to look at the storm and the waves and the stuff that's going on around him, and he gets afraid. And guess what? He started sinking. See, fear will sink you. When Peter had faith, he walked on water. When he had fear, he sank. The same is true for you and I. Fear will sink you. So what do we need to do? The thing that Peter did at first. Fix our eyes on Jesus. You've got to fix your eyes on Jesus. See, you can't see the storm if you're staring at Jesus. When your eyes are fixed on the king of glory, everything else fades away. No matter how big the wave is, no matter how hard the storm is, no matter what's going on, when your eyes are fixed on Jesus, everything else fades away. See, when you really see Jesus, you see beyond the storm. And when you see beyond the storm, you see that God is doing something you wouldn't have even dreamt of before. And you start to see the storm not as something to fear or something to avoid or something just to survive or get through. But you see the storm as a vehicle for the miraculous work that God wants to do in your life. And so for you and for me today, the question that each of us has is, do I want to just survive or do I want to thrive? Do I just want to get through the storm to the shore or do I want to walk on water with Jesus. And so I want to invite you, wherever you're at right now, to, to, to pray with me. I want you to close your eyes, bow your head, and pray with me. Uh, maybe, you know, if you're driving, maybe don't close your eyes. You can keep driving. But let's take a second and let's pray together and really come before the Lord and ask him to help us step out in faith and thrive. And so let's pray together. Lord, we thank you for your great love for us. Lord, we thank you that you are our anchor in the storm for those of us who believe in you and belong to you, that you will hold us fast, that we don't have to fear, that you're going to get us through, that we will survive, that you will fulfill your good purpose for us, Lord. Thank you that we can rest in that hope and be anchored. We don't have to experience the seasickness of life, Lord, but we can rest and trust in you. But Lord, we don't want to just be those who get through this storm. We don't want to just be those who, who... get by and are just okay. We want to thrive in the midst of it, Lord. We want to walk on water. And so, Lord, I pray that you would reveal to us today those ways that you want to see us walk on water, those ways that you're inviting us out onto the waves, into the storm, to see something miraculous happen. Lord, for that person who's been feeling led to invite their friend to church, Lord, would they see this as the opportunity to walk on water? Invite them to join us for church online. Lord, for that person who's been invited to trust you with their finances, even though they don't understand how it's going to work, Lord, would you reveal to them your power and your love for them and draw them to yourself, Lord? For that person who's been invited to step out onto the water, trusting you for healing in their marriage rather than going the route of divorce, Lord, would you speak to them right now? Would you meet them? Would you call them out to you on the water, Lord? For those who are looking for personal growth in their relationship with you and they feel stagnant and stuck, Lord, would you call them out into the storm, on the 
water to follow you and to walk with you, Lord. For those who are needing to step out and to serve others in a new and fresh and different way, Lord, and get their eyes off of themselves and get their eyes turned outward to realize that there is need that they can meet in this world, Lord. Would you call them out onto the water, Lord, to step out into the storm, to be a vehicle of hope in this tough time, Lord. For those who are dealing with fear and anxiety right now, Lord, would you call them to step out into the storm, something so hard to fathom even doing, Lord. Invite them to walk on the waves with you. Lord, help us to walk by faith, not by fear. Help us to step out. And Lord, finally, I wanna pray for that person who may be tuning in today and maybe, you know, they haven't known if they believe in a God. Maybe they just, a friend of theirs shared this on Facebook or they tuned into church online and they're watching on YouTube and they've just been kind of listening just to see what this whole thing is all about. Lord, if there's anyone like that, would you speak to them right now? Would you draw them by your Holy Spirit? Would you stir up in their heart a longing for you? And I want to take a second, and if that's you today, if you're watching today and you haven't known if there's a God, and maybe you have questions that you want God to answer and you're not sure if he's real and you know, you're looking for hope right now, but you're not sure where to find it and if this is the right place, I wanna tell you that God is big enough to answer your questions for you. You can ask him, put it to him. If you have doubts, say, God, answer me. How do you move in this? How do, how do you show your goodness in the midst of a suffering situation like this? Whatever it may be, ask him, that's fine. But I want to tell you, this God that we're talking about, that we have anchored ourselves in, the one that is calling us to walk out on the water, this God loves you. Whoever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're going through right now, he loves you. He loves you more than your friends love you. He loves you more than your family loves you. He loves you more than you love you. His love for you is deeper than the deepest ocean and higher than the highest sky. It's more than you can fathom. Well, you might be thinking, man, I, I, I want to know that love. I want to know somebody that loves me that much. I want to I experience that love. Why am I not experiencing that? Well, I'll tell you why you're not experiencing that love of God. There's a reason, and the reason is this. See, the Bible says that all of us are sinners and have turned our backs on God. And you might be thinking, I'm not a sinner. I don't know. Well, here's what sin means. Sin means us telling God that our way is better than his. And if you're honest with yourself, I'm going to guess that you would say that, yeah, Okay, I've told God that. I think my way's better. And if you're further honest with yourself, you might be realizing right now that maybe your way isn't as good as you think that it is. Maybe your way has led to some hard things in your life. Maybe your way has let you down. Maybe your way was great up until a week ago when suddenly this virus pulled it out from under you and you feel like the rug got pulled out from under you. Now you're just laying on the floor in a mess. And see, the problem with going your own way is that as it says in Proverbs, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end of it is death. Our way leads to death. But see, God loves you. And he couldn't stand the thought of you facing this death that I'm talking about. He couldn't stand the thought of you being separated from him. He longs for you to experience his love in his life. And so he had to do something. He had to step in because somebody had to die because of our rebellion. And so he said, I will take your place. And so Jesus, God in flesh, came and lived a perfect life. And he died a sinner's death on the cross for you. He died in your place. He took your place on that cross. And as he died, he buried your sin in the grave and rose from the dead three days later and has said, all who will call on my name will be saved. If you put your trust in Jesus today, you can know that you'll have an eternal home in heaven when you die. You can know the love of God that I've talked about that passes our understanding, the love that we can't comprehend. You can know and experience these things. You can experience the hope of Jesus that is your anchor in the storm. You can experience the walking on water that we're talking about as you step out and follow God into the unknown. God wants all of this for you, but you have to respond to him. And so the choice is yours. And if you'd like to say yes to Jesus right now, I want to invite you to pray with me. Just repeat after me. Say, Lord, thank you for loving me. Thank you for dying for me. Please forgive me.
for going my own way. I want to follow you now. Would you please make me yours? I choose to trust you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks for joining us today. I hope that you were encouraged by the message. And I just want to give you an opportunity. If you put your faith in Jesus for the first time today, uh, we want to know about that. And we want to hook you up with some materials and to to pray with you and to just share uh, the excitement that is the walk with Jesus with you. And so if that's you, would you please let us know? You can do that by going to our website at mountainlife.church. Scroll down to the bottom of the page and click on the link that's there. And we collect your information and we'd love to reach out and connect with you. Also, uh, if you'd like to support our ministry by giving a tax-deductible online gift, you can do so on our website as well. Click on the Give link at the top of the page and put your info in there. Thank you for your support. Pray that you're blessed and encouraged and have a great day. God bless.